and welcome to another classic guitar video. <clears throat> uh, tonight's guitar is kind of a special guitar. Um, it's one I just got from uh, my friend Kevin, who I've mentioned before. Um, I, uh, I've gotten many, 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 many guitars from him in the past, um, but I just picked this up from him recently, and it is a uh, new, only used once, uh, basically, um, Reverend Volcano. It's made by a guitar company called Reverend. Um, they're made in the USA, hand-built, hand-numbered, um, and it is a flying V, basically. And um, it's made of Carina wood, and it's natural finish. Um, so let's just go ahead and get right started on this, uh, this uh, guitar. I have a gander at it. And there it is in all of its glory. Um, again, that is a Reverend volcano um reverend makes quite a few models actually um reverends are one of my favorite makers um next to uh, of course my bc rich and ibanez um etc um but they make many 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 different models i pretty much have every model they make um i have one of these in sunburst actually um uh, uh, original sunburst a traditional sunburst um, so this one's pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to do my usual thing to it. Um, it's pretty nice. It has string locks on it. Um, locking tuners, also known as locking tuners. Um, so they're very easy to uh, deal with. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, hand signed on the back and I'll show you guys that. And, and uh, pretty nice. It's pretty well in perfect condition. Um, yeah, she's a, she's a beaut, she's a real beaut, so we'll go ahead and plug it in for a, a test play, I don't know if I can get my cable situated, but it's, <clears throat> and again, this is called a, um, Reverend, and it's by the maker, uh, oh, excuse me, it's called a Volcano, that's the model number. Um, by a company called Reverend, um, and it's a pretty cool, badass guitar. So you'll give it here. Switch works. Jack is not staticky. Tone and volume work, no issues. Test play this puppy. If I don't break it, I just heard, I just knocked it on the thing.
So it's pretty darn spiffy and spectacular and spifferific and awesome and cool and neato <laughs> and all those things. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, pretty darn cool. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Um, we'll start with the usual and that's the uh, tightening of the so gotta move my table. Tightening of the um oh, of the uh, tuners. They are locking tuners. Um, so I will be able to get the strings off and back on um, with relative ease. Um, most people get the wrong notion about locking tuners. Uh, most people think locking tuners, here I'll show you. Most people think locking tuners tune, uh, locks, the, locks the tuning head in which you use the turn and tune the string. Um, tune, locking tuners do not lock these. This is the lock right here. Um, which is no more than just a, a fancy large screw nut. Um, what they actually do is lock the string in place. Um, they were originally kind of meant for people that had issues stringing guitars and getting the winds around the tuning, uh, the tuner post. Um, people, even still to this day, they bird's nest the uh, the uh, wraps around the tuning peg. Um, so it was kind of meant for those kind of people that just simply can't uh, get the string right. So you just pull the string through tight um, and then you turn the tuner, the uh, locking mechanism tight and then you snip off the end of the string and voila, you're done. Um, you still have to tune it, but, um, but yeah, locking tuners do not lock the tuner, they lock the string to the tuning peg. Um, that's kind of a misnomer. Um, there are companies that make tuners that do lock this and that. They lock both mechanisms um, and they, they're, those I recommend more because um, they will keep a tune better. Um, most people spend all this money buying locking tuners only to find out they don't lock the tuner, they only lock the string to the tuning peg. And you get a lot of very disappointed people going, wait a minute, why isn't the, why isn't the thing locking? Why aren't these locked? Well, because that's what they were meant for, um, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but again, there are companies that do actually make locking tuners that lock both mechanisms. Um, and those I, I highly recommend more. Um, they work really well. Um, so I highly recommend ones like that. Uh, they just keep the tune better. And they kind of act like a, a kind of pseudo replacement for a locking nut, like on a Floyd Rose, uh, this for example. So that's what the locking tuner um, aspect is all about, if you will. So we'll go ahead and tighten the uh, peg nut. And today is day before Independence Day, so that's cool. Having a barbecue, huge barbecue tomorrow and fireworks. And celebrate it. It's kind of taking the day off, semi-sorta. Um, I still might work a half or a quarter of the day um, myself. Um, so, let's see. 
yeah, we'll go ahead and move the view. And they'll sit back down. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and detune it. And take these strings off. Now the advantage of these locking tuners, you don't need to crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and crank, and crank on the tuner to detune the guitar. You only need to turn it about literally about uh, about three to four turns, and that's it. Then the guitar boom, it's then it's boom, it's, it's detuned. So that is kind of a cool aspect of uh, the tuners, if you will. So there's there's pros and cons to them. Um, I like them. Um, when I string these ty type up, you're only supposed you're not supposed to put any winds, so they say, around your tuning peg. Um, I still put a couple of winds around the tuning peg, at least two. Um, some people are like, oh no, you shouldn't do that. You'll ruin it and you'll do this to it and do that. It does virtually nothing to it. To put a wind or two um, or even three on some of the higher strings um, around around them. It really doesn't hurt. Um, you're not hurting anything by, by doing that. Um, so another misnomer that people say, um, you're hurting the tuner or hurting the string or you're hurting the guitar or you're hurting something. Um, by doing that, um, that's just simply not true. Um, <laughs> just simply, simply is not true. Um, so there is that. So you just kind of take this off as a whole unit, if you will. And I'll take the uh, these off for the tailpiece. So this guitar should go pretty fast um, in terms of my work tonight. Um, again, it's brand new, so I just have to do my... <laughs> despite it, the frets and the frets boards are very dry and um, slightly corroded. Um, so, I'll do my thing to it, as per usual. And, uh, yeah. Do my thang. Do my thang to it. I'm going to have a good old time. And tomorrow night's guitar is still going to be that, um, another one I bought from my friend Kevin, same person I bought this from, um, is going to be that early 80s, um, Washburn, um, hollow body. I think it's semi hollow body, actually. Um, I've been saving that guitar. I bought that from him probably about three, four months ago now. I think I bought it in February or March. Um, and I've been setting it aside. Um, special guitars I like to do on holidays. Um, Christmas, New Year, Thanksgiving, Easter, Halloween. Um, just a thing I have, what can I say? Um, I think that guitar is going to be a keeper. I'm not going to sell it. Or if I do put it up for sale, I'm going to put a really high full pop retail on it. And if somebody buys it, great. And if they don't, I won't be crying about it. Um, if nobody buys it. Um, so, um, where is that? Oop. So well, that'll be cool to uh, to do that guitar tomorrow night. I'll be looking highly forward to that. And he's been looking highly forward to me doing it. <laughs> Every time he comes over, he's like, man, when are you, you going to do this thing? And I tell him, ah, you know, I save my special guitars for holidays. Um, I just do. It's just a thing I have just makes my holiday, whatever the holiday is, more special, and, um, you know, what can I say, it's just something I do. Um, something else I do is, again, with these switches, um, most manufacturers just kind of put these switches in willy-nilly, 
they don't associate them anywhere. What I do is um, I line them, I loosen them up, and line them up. Um, back position is back pickup. Middle position is both pickups. Front position is front pickup. Um, really simple, really easy. Um, I don't even know of a guitar manufacturer that does that. Um, uh, nor do they care. I don't think they necessarily care. It's just kind of an attention to detail thing that I do. Um, even Gibson doesn't do that. You know, I've been to the Gibson factory, the Fender factory, and I watch them put in pots and put in switches and how they associate um, the positions, if you will, of each uh, item, and they, they don't. They just put it in, tighten it up, and, and uh, voila, they consider it done. Um, which is fine, but I, I like to do that uh, extra attention to detail, um, if you will, um, just because I can, you know, you know, just something I like to do, it's, again, it's the attention to detail thing, um, you know, just that attention to detail, you know. We're tightening up the pots. Not that they're loose, but I liked them. I liked them fairly tight. Because I can't tell you how many guitars I bought and people. The first thing I check is the tightness of the pot, and it's just it's spinning around. And a person I'm buying the guitar from says, "Yeah, the man that needs a new pot or something because it's all loose and it's all this and all that and it doesn't work and blah blah blah." And it's like more times than more times than not, it's just a loose nut on the pot. Um, and that's it, you know, just kind of one of those things. Um, so, take the truss rod cover off and check it. And minor adjustment, if need be. So we'll go ahead and change the view. Oops. That's good enough. So normally there's only three screws that hold the um, press rod cover on. So we just unscrew those and set them aside. And uh, we take the press rod cover off. Easy peasy. Mm, it gives you a chance to inspect the truss rod cover itself and make sure it's not cracked or broke or uh, anything of that nature. Check the hole first to make sure it's uh, copacetic. And I'll get my tool out. Go ahead and check it. I like to find a position straight up and down. If I can, if not, I, I choose the next best thing. And then I go a little uh, lo uh, uh, loose and then a little tight just to check it. And I'll go back to its original position, and I'll usually just give it a little, like maybe a sixteenth of a turn. Uh, tight. I already checked it with the straight edge across, and it was not. It was just barely, barely off a little bit. So this little adjustment that I just did um, will will cure that um, for sure, without fail, for sure, without fail done it many, many, many times and I know what works and what doesn't work. So Now we'll go ahead and tighten the uh, the um, pickup bezels. Some people call them pickup frames. Um, 
I equate it with more of a bezel than I do a frame. But that's just me. That's just me. So, other than that, pick up pole height next here. Sometimes I'll sit down and do this, and sometimes I need to stand because I need to see. I need to see the adjustment from from up top. Plus, I need to feel it. So I get to use more of my senses to to uh, make the, my adjustments. So pretty nice guitar. Um, like I say, I, I kind of slate this for a keeper, um, but I will put a I will put it up for sale. Um, but I'll probably just put a uh, really high full pop retail on it. So, I mean, this is a thousand dollar guitar, brand new, and it is brand new, basically. Um, so I imagine I'll probably put like like seven eight hundred dollars on it. And if somebody wants to give me that, great. If not, that's fine too. I won't cry over it. Um, this guitar, particular guitar is not a need to sell, have to sell. So there is that. Yeah. Sometimes when you turn these, the wax comes out of the pickup, and you gotta kind of clean the wax off. And so this is why you adjust them before you polish and clean and wax them. Otherwise, you're just gonna mess up your your job you just did. So, I'm gonna flip this pig over and check the jack, make sure it's tight. Use the right screwdriver, the better screwdriver. Oop, it doesn't quite fit in it. <laughs> Check the uh, nut that holds the uh, jack in place. Make sure it's nice and tight. It's nice and tight. I think what I'll do is I'll take the back plate off just to give a quick gander at the uh, electronics some of the electronics, the, the rest of the electronics are under the pick guard but uh, there's some here I'll just take a quick a quick gander Purdy. She's purdy. It's got a uh, full size 500k pots. Um, 
same exact pots Gibson uh, Custom Shop in USA use, the same uh, three-way switch that uh, Gibson Custom Shop in USA use. Um, you know, not just a nice piece. I'm going to take a quick picture of that just while I have it open for giggles because I can. If I can keep my camera straight, that is. And, uh, yeah. It's got a shielded, um, oops. It's got a shielded, uh, cover. So we'll just put the screws back. And, uh, We'll continue with this by doing the frets and the fretboard. I don't foresee this part, this uh, job giving me any issues because um, the guitar is new, so basically, um, yeah. So and again, the wood on this is all. Um, a Karina wood. Um, again, something that Gibson uses for their Karina um, guitars, like their Expo Explorers, Karina Explorers, etc. Karina V's. Um, it's good wood, sturdy wood, um, but it's still fairly light wood. It's not super dense, it's moderately dense. Um, yeah, so she's a beaut. I'll go ahead and tighten the tuners, the back of the tuners. It's a really good quality ultra high good quality uh, clear coat on this. I mean it is just absolutely flawless. I mean it is just awesomeness. So these are handmade and hand um, serialed and hand signatured um, with a silver uh, paint pen. Um, all reverends are like that. So that's how you know you're getting a, a real one and not a counterfeit one. I have actually seen counterfeits of these before. Um, it's weird. It's funny what people will counterfeit these days, but it is what it is, I guess. People will counterfeit anything uh, these days. <laughs> so we'll take a picture of the fretboard before we start. I'm gonna get a fresh uh, drink. I'm thirsty. And we'll start. And you know what? I was at Lowe's and um, Home Depot today. And again, I forgot my battery on my drill. I just, I don't know what's with me in the battery on this drill that I keep forgetting. Um, God. I just, uh, dumbfounds me as to why I keep forgetting, but I do. I guess I'll have to take down this, write down the serial number of this thing right now before I forget. And uh, see if I can get a replacement for it. Hopefully I can. See, Black & Decker H PB12, I think is the serial, is the uh, model number. So, I will be right back, forthwith. Stories about you since I was a child. 
Um, somebody in chat asked me why I'm doing this guitar and not the um, Epiphone Wildcat uh, that I said I was going to do. Um, th that Epiphone Wildcat is going to take a little more extensive work, and I got a kind of a little bit of a late start tonight. Um, you know, I got to replace the three-way switch and that, and put new strings on it, and uh, one other, I think, small issue with one of the pots. And I'm pretty tired. I had a full day today. Um, and this is, was a guitar that wasn't going to take much effort to finish. Um, uh, plus, I was going to go ahead and, since tomorrow is my uh, Craigslist renewal day, um, I was going to put this up for sale. Now again, I'm, I don't want to sell it. I don't need to sell it. I don't have to sell it. Um, I kind of want this to be a keeper because I have pretty much every reverend ever made. Um, this is a duplicate. I do have my other one is a, a, ch a cherry uh, sunburst rather. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a really high full pop retail on this. And like I said, if somebody buys it, great. If they don't, um, then that's fine too. I will not cry tears about it if nobody buys it. Um, this guitar, new, brand new, I think is I think is eleven hundred dollars. Um, so I will probably put seven or eight, between seven and eight hundred dollars on it. Hopefully, I'm not battery powered to do this. This particular, I'll show it to you real quick. Um, this particular, oops, drill is what is considered a disposable drill. Um, it's a nice drill. Um, it's not high-end drill. I bought it a couple of summers ago. Um, I think three summers ago now. For it was on killer sales, like twenty-four dollars with the battery and a little small set of uh, tool, uh, tips and tools and the charger. Um, usually what manufacturers of tools like this will do is they'll do a big run of tools like this and they won't make a replacement battery. Um, so you're kind of stuck with throwing the whole thing away because you can no longer get a um, replacement battery for it. This is battery, just the black part, and it comes off um, like this. 
Um, so I will hopefully be able to get a new battery um, for this so I don't have to trash the entire drill because the drill is in perfect condition um, cosmetically and mechanically and I would hate to um, throw the whole thing away just because of the battery. Um, I should be able to get probably another three years of use out of that drill if I can get the battery for it. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if I can get the battery for it. Hopefully it will. Hopefully it will. We'll see. We'll see. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. I know it hasn't been plugged in long, but I want to try it. Just time and then we'll uh, undo it and continue on. I think I'm going to take these two screws off and take them in the shop and just give them a little tiny brush, wire wheel brush on them. They're just ever so slightly tarnished. Um, even though it's, it's new guitar, it's only been played once. I mean, there's no strum marks on it. I mean, nothing. Um, but, you know, even if you buy a brand new guitar and just hang it up on your wall and you have live in an area where it gets humid or whatever, um, you know, little things will get a little tarnished just sitting on a wall. Not that this was sitting on a wall. I'm just using that as an example, but... But uh, you know what I mean. You get my drift. Okay, let's see if that did anything. summers so that's that's pretty good I mean, and it's still not a hundred percent dead so um, that's something to say about the longevity of um, the uh, 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 black and decker used to call it black and pecker. <laughs> That's what it called. Black and pecker. Uh, doing chat, okay. Hello, thank you. So, uh, clean um, microfiber rag, as you can see. That's a shadow down there. Adjust my camera up a little bit. So I'll give it a couple of wipes back and forth about a dozen times or so. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ooh, man. Look at that. Uh, see what I mean? Pretty wild for what's considered a new guitar. It's got zero fret wear on it. I mean, absolutely, categorically, irrefutably, zero. Zero wear. So I'll go ahead and do my thing to it in between each fret. And I can't think of one guitar tech that does this. They just wipe across it and call it done. But I get the edge between the wood and the start of the fret. 
And a lot of techs will tell me, you don't have to do that. You're wasting your time. There, there's no dirt there. Well, look. The camera to adjust there and see those dirt spots. That's coming. Coming off of this. Yeah, I've gotten in arguments with guitar techs that have been supposedly guitar techs for 20 years and say, you don't need to do that. There's no dirt there. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your effort. Um, and then I show this to them and they go, oh, okay. It's like, okay. So much for being a guitar tech for 20 something years. I've been working on guitar since I was 10 and 46. Pretty nice. Um, the block inlays are genuine mother of pearl. They're not plastic or acrylic. They are the real deal. Um, Rosewood fretboard is the real deal. Um, yeah. Frets are high quality stainless steel. The guitar is stock. It's not uh, been modified in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah. So she's a beaut. Um, the guitar does have a case. Um, but I'm not going to, if I do sell it, I'm not going to sell it with the case. Um, because the case, the case is like another $120. I mean, it's, it's an expensive case, so. If somebody wants the case, they can pay me the extra um, 100 bucks. You know, I'll give them 20 bucks off. Um, if not, they can buy their own case. It's funny with cases, you know. I used to sell guitars with cases, but then I started finding that people did not like the case or the gig bag that I was including. Not that they were in bad condition or anything. It's just, you know, sometimes cases are like with, with people or like, you know, a car. You only like a certain t you type of car. You only want a certain type of case or a certain color of case or a certain style or you want a hard case and not a gig bag or you want a gig bag and not a hard case. Um, so it's just kind of a matter of preference there. Um, it's one of them, them dar things, you know. <coughs> um, so I stopped including a guitar, a case with uh, my guitars. And very seldomly do I have somebody say, um, do you have a case? Or will you include a case? Um, most of the time, not all the time, a um, person will just say, oh, I have my own case, or oh, I want, a, just, I want a new case, or I want a gig bag, or I want a this, or I want a that, and you know. So, with that, um, I don't include cases. Unless it's like a really specialty shape guitar or something, and it's just like you would not be able to find a case for it because it's such a specialty case or specialty shape guitar. Uh, in a case like that, I would include the um, uh, case because you wouldn't be able to find one otherwise if it's an oddball shape guitar or something, you know? Um, so yeah. Some people are shooting off fireworks outside already. And it's just like, you know, tomorrow's 4th of July, people. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is 4th of July, not today. Just wasting your firework, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah. Again, if somebody wants the case for this, they can pay me. They can pay an extra hundred bucks for the case because the case is like brand the frig new. Um, so 
so there is that. This again. Really cool guitar. I like them. They have a lot of cool, unique, um, one off shapes. This is just kind of a standard flying V. Um, but they have some shapes that are just indicative to their brand. Um, Pretty darn cool. And most of the reverends have a raised center. You know, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a raised center. It's raised up about mm, an, about an eighth of an inch. Um, I want to say all reverend guitars are like that. I, I, yeah, I think they're all like that. Um, just kind of unique um, of them, if you, you know. Um, yeah, just kind of a cool um, thing to set them to set them um, apart, if you will, from the others. Uh, Polish everything, even the sides of the um, pickups, is because I can. I do it because I can. So. I'm going to put some, uh, no, I take it back, um, these are new strings that are on it. Never mind, I was going to say I was going to put some new Super Slinkies on there. Ernie Ball Super Slinkies, but it's already got brand new Ernie Ball Super Slinky, um, Super Slinkies. So, I don't need to do that. No sense in putting new strings on there when the strings are already new. It don't make no sense, so I'm not going to do it. As George W. Bush would say, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, the frets and the fretboard came out really nice. Really, really, really nice. Pretty cool. You know, about the only thing I would have done differently um, if I were Reverend building this guitar is I would not have put a black uh, pickguard on it. Um, I personally think this would have looked really good with a white perloid uh, pickguard on it. Just me. Just me. Um, but I think that would have set it off really nice. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with black pit guard, it's just um, I think it would have set it off, set the guitar's looks off um, a little better. But again, that's just me. Coming out. 
it's quite quite lovely. Um, I have another guitar coming in. It's a uh, BC Rich uh, V, uh, Junior V, they're called, but it's BC Rich. Kind of like the one I did um, a couple of years ago, if you guys remember that one. It's the exact same guitar. Uh, the one I had so much trouble with the uh, D-Tuna um, on the Floyd Rose. And I remember I just took it off. I mean, uh, unless you know really know how to put one of those on, you're gonna screw up the the, the tremolo, the Floyd Rose tremolo, by putting one of those on. And whoever put it on did not do it right at all. They just bumbled the whole thing up. So I, I just ended up taking the whole thing off. Um, not necessary anyway. Um, those things are kind of. I don't know. Um, they were made popular by Van Eddie Van Halen, and I like them. I do like them, but they are very hard to set up if you don't know what you're doing. Um, very hard to set up. And I worked with it for a couple of hours, and it just would not fit right on the guitar. Um, it wasn't a workability issue. It, it was just a it was a um, fit issue. And it just was not fitting on the guitar at all. Um, so I took it off. Um, um, I do know how to put them on and how to configure them. Um, I've done many of them. But uh, for some reason, this one was not cooperating. And... Uh, so yeah, I, I took it off. Um, it really wasn't working well anyway. Uh, so I took it off. And uh, I, th I did put it on another guitar. I put it on an OLP uh, style Eddie Van Halen guitar. And it worked perfect. It worked flawless. It worked absolutely flawless. Um, didn't take me but less than a half hour to put it on and set it up. Um, for some reason, it was just having issue working on that guitar um, why I don't know it just it just simply wasn't um, it just simply wasn't working um, don't know why so we got the first polish wax done it looks pretty darn good it ought to the guitar still new so <laughs> look at that that is pretty spectacular It's going to be 115 degrees here, um, Friday and Saturday and possibly Sunday. It's going to be hotter than the hinges of hell here. I'm getting my air conditioning set up and my swamp cooler in the other room set up. Um, yeah, it's just it's going to be a hot bastard uh, this weekend. We've had a pretty lucky here. Um, we haven't had but a couple of hot, hot days above 90. Um, we've been pretty lucky this summer. Um, I haven't even really turned on my air conditioning much. Um, or my ceiling fan or my window fan or anything like that. I've got it running now just because it's a little warm in here. but um, Which is a good thing because saving on my electricity electricity bill okay so put those back in Get the other one easy guitar to work on get it up for sale tomorrow um, again
again. Um, it's not a need to sell, have to sell. It's kind of one I want to keep. But I'm going to put a really high full pop retail on it. If somebody buys it, great. If they don't, that's fine too. I won't lose sleep over it. It's an expensive guitar anyway. And not everybody would be able to afford one anyway. $1,100 guitar, new. Um, so, um, you would be hard pressed to find one, a junky, beat up used one, for under $500. You'd be really hard pressed. So there we go on that, and do the uh, the uh, bridge pegs next. Dumped all my screwdrivers over. So I'll put this down all the way. And then I'll put it up to a factory setting. I'm gonna get the strings back on. So yeah, it's supposed to be 100, 113, no, 115 degrees here. Uh, this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, summers just kind of seem to get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. So that's why all these people that come on and say silly things like global warming doesn't exist, there's no such thing. Um, I'm more apt to not believe those people just for the fact that I've been living in the same home and area for 46 years and I've seen the trends between the summers and the winters and the springs and the falls and the summers are continually getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter every year. Um, I think our hottest day here last year was 122. You know, it's like this is, this, 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 this is not the desert, this is the valley, you know, um, and we're not hundreds and hundreds of miles from the beach, we're, we're about an hour from the beach, um, so we're not that far, we're 25 miles, um, east of downtown Los Angeles. So yeah. Ooh, and when the really hot weather like this comes, it really affects my back too. Um, just like you guys know uh, how it affects me in the winter when it gets starts getting really cold. Um, same thing when it gets really hot, it affects my back um, also. Um, <laughs> one of those crazy things, you know. Uh, it is what it is, and that's what it is. It is what it is, and that's what it is. It is what it is, and that's what it is. Pretty good quality, um, just like a uh, uh, Gibson American or Gibson Custom Shop USA. 
Um, very stout, very good quality chrome, very good quality. I mean, the parts aren't wishy-washy. They've got a lot of play in them. The tolerances are very close. Um, you know, some of them you pick up. After you take them off, you pick them up and you can hear them rattle, like a baby rattle. This one, you don't hear anything. Um, no rattle. No rattle can at all on this. Um, very good quality. And the uh, model number on that bridge is a BM003. For those who are just curious about what it is, that's what it is. Pretty good quality stuff. Okay. Whew, yeah, my back is already starting to hurt. Always something. I tell you. It's just always, always, always something. Pretty nice quality here. Again, this uh, model is called the Reverend Volcano. Um, Volcano is the model name. Reverend is the maker of the guitar. Um, yeah. You don't see too many of these compared to the other models. Um, just because they're in kind of an odd shape and there's a lot of people that don't like this shape because they can't sit down and play this guitar in their lap. They have to put their knee right in between here and angle it up kind of to play it. Otherwise it's kind of kind of odd to play sitting down. Um, so not a lot of people buy V's of any kind really. Um, people do. I'm not saying people don't buy them at all, ever. Um, it's just they're a little more to them. I think I'm going to take those two screws out and take them to the shop real quick. And wire wheel them. Just a tiny bit. I mean, I'm just going to touch it to the wheel for like one second, literally, and then call it done. I'll just take these both out, since they're the same, same length. I'll double check the length to make sure they're both the same, but I'm pretty sure they are. So that way I don't have to get them mixed up, and they're both the same, so I'll take them out, and I'll be right back. Change your bandage. Oh, we must keep moving. You're hemorrhaging. We have to stop the bleeding. That chain drag was all bone from the 
Just go ahead and I'll put these right back in. Now they're nice and shiny again. They were just a little bit tarnished. Not bad. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Tiny, 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 tiny bit. The others are perfect. I'm not going to mess with those. Done, bridge is done, fretboard's done, top of the uh, top of the uh, headstock is done. Oh my back is really starting to hurt now. up and flip her over and then do the back and the sides and then the back of the neck. Whoops. So, alright. Make sure my drink is still cold. Yeah, not really, but okay. Could be a fresh, fresh soda. Karina. Wood. It's wooden, as my dad would used to say. If something was made of wood, he would, wouldn't call it just wood. He would say, it's wooden. <laughs> this is wooden. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's what he would say. He would say, it's wooden. With the en at the end of it, wooden. It's wooden. 
and we'd just be like, okay, well, yes, it is wooden. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is, it's wooden. Pretty wood, um, kind of a semi-yellow wood, wooden, wooden wood. Good thing I chose this guitar to work on and not that Wildcat. Is that Wildcat, it might be a two-nighter. Um, even if I start right on time at 9 o'clock with four hours, 9, 10, 11, 12, we'll putting four hours of work into it, um, it might not be enough. I don't know. I'll probably save that guitar for maybe Saturday night. Uh, Friday night, rather, I'm sorry. So let's have a look at this and see how it came out. Ooh, yeah, beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Really good quality. I mean, I, I would put this up against any $3,000 Gibson. I mean, I really would. I mean... The quality on these are just stellar. Stellar, stellar, stellar quality. quality the uh, the bottom of the ends are perfect uh, sometimes on V's the bottoms of these edges are are uh, dinged up and dented up and and all that no mm -mm, not on this one they are absolutely perfect nothing absolutely categorically irrefutably perfect every way, shape, and form. Yeah. Yeah, baby. That was badass. Tell me right now. Tell you right now, irrefutably, this is bad to the bone. And I got that other BC Rich, uh, the uh, NJ series. Um, so it's not the cheap ass one, it's the good NJ series, um, BC Rich. Um, uh, Junior V uh, coming soon <laughs> as soon as the guy can get down here to deliver it to me um, and then I have a BC rich uh, ASM one uh, black sparkle uh, coming soon as the person can deliver it to me uh, I'm not driving right now so um, got to have people, if they want to sell something to me, they got to deliver it to me, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. um, but they don't make the, uh, BC Rich doesn't make the ASM ones anymore. Um, and in fact, uh, the BC Rich company is for sale right now, and rumor has it, uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses is uh, either wants to buy it or is going to buy it. Um, that would be cool because I would hate to see the brand die or get shelved. 
Um, so that would be that would be stellar if Slash would buy it. Um, rather than let the brand die, I would be wholeheartedly smashed if the brand would die. A lot of companies are selling or going bankrupt these days. It's really a shame. You know, Gibson's in trouble. Fender's in trouble. Is in trouble. BC Rich is in trouble. Um, and all these companies that are in trouble um, these days, it's, it's not good. The Guitar Center's in trouble. Sam Ash is in trouble. Um, yeah, a lot of companies are in financial dire straits right now. It's really a shame. Um, when I do the back of these reverends with the serial number on them, I, I don't rub very hard because I don't want to rub the uh, signature and the uh, and the um, serial number off of them. So I have to be really careful to uh, very careful to uh, not do that. <laughs> It's absolutely flawless. I mean, it is just flawless. <laughs> That's all I can say. Absolutely categorical, irrefutably flawless. Sure, and the serial number still there, and it is. They use pretty good quality uh, paint pens, silver paint pens. So one would be hard pressed to polish off the uh, the uh, serial number and the, and the uh, signature and all that jazz. One little spot I gotta redo right here. take pictures of this tomorrow, 4th of July. That'll be cool. We'll take a picture of it on 4th of July. That's pretty neat, I think, anyway. Pretty cool to do that. Um, yeah, 4th of July tomorrow. <laughs> I had to double think of that for a second, because here has gone by so fast. And I just cannot believe how fast this year has gone by. I mean, just, I mean, it seems like we just sat down to turkey dinner last week. And then the week before that, we sat down to, or the week after that, we sat down to opening presents. Um, crazy how fast the year has gone by. The year's already half over. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Cray, cray. Trust cover rather. And we'll 
go ahead and we'll put it back. Uh-oh. I'm missing screw. It's not cool. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm missing a screw. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I was like, no! I'm missing a screw. I was like, no! I sit down, my back's killing me. Mm. Oh. Oh. Okay, put on the uh, bridge. Wow, she's beaut. She is a real beaut. Now I'm go ahead and I will lube the Move the uh, nut. Starting to hurt. Ay, ay, ay. Always something. I have to take a break after I polish the uh, tailpiece, I think, because I am hurting. This is the tailpiece. Still got the strings in it, and I'm going to leave it that way. So, just polish and wax this thing up. And Uh, yeah. It's pretty easy to clean them and polish them with the string still in it. You just go one side like this and then the other side. And then you go in between each string up and down and side to side. Pretty easy. And then you polish the bottom and then that's it and you just uh, like that pretty straightforward Ooh, nice stellar 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 I will say. Make sure to take one final look. Make sure I don't need to polish underneath there again. If I missed something, pick the strings up and go ahead and put it back in. Boom. Um, I said boom. There we go. <laughs> kind of a sure fit, if you will. 
Oh, I'm gonna lean back and take a little break, uh, guys, because whew, my back is really hurting. had a bad back. Well, not always. I mean, you guys know the story. <laughs> Ones of you who follow me. Um, I hurt my back at work. Um, uh, I'll take it back. I, I had a car fall on me uh, while I was working underneath it. And then uh, a few years later, I had a uh, industrial accident <sighs> at work. And it made it worse. And... Um, I haven't worked a clock-in, clock-out regular job since then. I still work. I mean, this is my work. Um, but uh, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> um, yeah. So these strings are pretty new. I'm not going to go ahead and change these out because there's just no reason to. tuners have string locks. Um, they do not lock the um, they do not lock the tuners the tuning mechanism. They lock the string. Um, again, a lot of people get that mixed up. And they go to buy some locking tuners for their guitar and install them themselves or have them installed. And then they go, wait a minute, the tuners are still turning. Why aren't these working? And only to come find out that they only lock string. Uh, uh, locking tuners only lock the string, not the tuner. Now again, there are manufacturers that manufacture tuners that lock the string and the tuner. Um, but most guitars uh, either come with locking tuners. These came with the locking tuners. They're their own brand, Reverend. Um, so it just depends. Um, but, yeah. Um, but if you tighten the uh, screws on the heads of the tuners um, as tight as you can get them, um, that'll act as kind of a locking mechanism, if you will. I mean, it doesn't, but it, it, it helps. Let's go ahead and do the, do the next one here. those on as pretty much as tight as I can humanly do it with my fingers. Um, normally I won't take a pair of pliers or, or a needle nose or whatever and, and tighten them even more. Um, it's just not necessary um, unless they are a cheaper brand or a cheaper quality of, uh, of uh, locking tuner and 
then I would do that, but normally I, I don't tell uh, you. I don't need to do it. string I can probably go ahead and I can take my little my little um, piece of uh, scotch bright and just kind of just because it hasn't been played in a while it's got a little bit of of uh, corrosion on the string just a tiny bit so I'll go ahead and I'll clean this string up it's just a little bit of cut piece of very fine um, very fine uh, scotch bag. Scotch bright. I'm gonna have to stand up and do this one because I can't sit anymore because my back. My back is killing me. You know I keep saying that, but it is. Okay, why isn't this fitting anymore? Now the string seems too short. Side with these locking tuners is some people can't tighten them enough to keep the string from flinging out. Um, I have people all the time bringing me guitars telling me they want me to take the locking tuners out and put regular ones in. And they're like, they're like, yeah, I can't, I can't get past these tuners. And I'm like, well, okay. I will be more than happy to take your your string uh, or your uh, your uh, tuners. <laughs> they don't even want them back. They just say keep them. <laughs> so I've got like boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes. I'm not kidding. You. I've got dozens of sets of locking tuners people have given me. 
They just say, here, just, just keep them. Take them off, replace them, and, and keep them. They're yours. Don't like them, don't want them. Keep them. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> you don't want them, I will take them. Too short. The tip, uh, you know what, I think maybe the tip busted off of this one. Because uh, it's too short, it won't go. It won't go. It won't go anymore. Ah, uh, shit. It's literally like a quarter inch too short now. Make sure it's in its seat. No, it's too short now. Oh god, I'm gonna have to put a new string on there just because it's a quarter inch too short. Son of a mother, that really stinks. I can't stretch it. Oh man, that sucks. Yeah, that's another downside with blocking tuners is they will crimp down on this tip of the string, and when you go to take them off, it, it, it you know, it cuts the string. It's a shame, that's a new string. I'll keep the string, and if I ever get a guitar that's got a short scale on it, um, then I can use the string. It really sucks, but I'm like, oh, man, I hate that. Oh, well. That sucks. It sucks, but it is what it is. Go in my uh, string stock and grab a no string. It sucks, but it is what it is. Brand new Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball custom gauge. but sometimes you have to. I'll go ahead and I'll show you. And you'll watch how fast I put this string on. It's a 9 gauge. Um, I think the other one was a 10 gauge. But most people use 9s, so I put a 9 on it. So you just feed the string through. And I said feed the string through. And 
bastard. Come on, you bastard. Get up. I don't know you want to put it straight. I don't know you want to pull it. Make sure it's in its uh, uh, bridge saddle groove. And nut groove. Grab it with a pair of needle nose. Pull it straight. Go ahead and lock it in place. Well, and then I can. And then get a pair of dikes. A pair of dikes. Nip it off. And then voila. String is on. Not in tune, but it's on. Oh, shit, broke already. Whoa, man. That's bonk. Wow, it's pretty rare I break a string. Damn it, guys. Remember last time I fucking actually broke a string? Damn. Ah, son of a bitch. Okay, well. Jeez, a loop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, string string locks have their disadvantages. I'll I'll tell you that right now. Um, son of a mother. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a bitch. I'm gonna have to grab another one. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty rare I break a, a new string that I just put on. I can't even remember the last time. It's probably been three, four, five years. It was about the last time I broke a string. one that I put on. Yeah. It happens. We'll just have to be extra careful. If I don't want to break a second one, then I'm going to be very unhappy. I mean, it's only a couple dollars, but not even a couple of dollars. It's like, it's like a dollar, but less than a dollar. That's not the point, but... Okay. Eh, it happens to the best of us. So I will just go ahead, and I will be very careful. There's the old string remnant right there. Put my trash bag if I can get it there. I don't drop it first, I just dropped it. Oh. Okay. I'm starting to not have a good night here. Computer
This is interpreted. It's essential. You can gain more people in short temper for each of the past few days. That's all you can tell me. I'm going to give it up with you. It happens to the best of us. Oh. Okay, I'm over it. Can you give you guys this view back? Oh. This is supposed to be fun, not to, uh, not to, um, you know, work. <laughs> I mean, it is work, but it's not meant to be just, you know, always check the um, knobs, make sure they don't have a indicator on them, so you can just put them literally in any position. My back just is not what it used to be. It just isn't. It's just one of those things. You know? Oh. Oh. Oh.
Oh. Okay, now we'll go ahead and do a uh, string height. Long screwdriver. Give it half a turn. I might end up putting that end down because this is really high. This is like this is ham sandwich high. I'm gonna stick a ham sandwich underneath it. You know? Now we'll go half turn down on this end and see what that does. called dead note right there. Uh, 
So that's gonna have to. It's about as low as I can get it. It's not real super high, but it it's gonna. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. anyway but you know me I don't like it very close I like it perfect perfection I like it perfection oh I need to rest my back a minute though Let's see if anybody's in chat how you doing hello any questions concerns comments Constructive criticisms, that is. No, you suck or you're a jerk or anything like that. Constructive consider criticism. <laughs> Okay. 
that one's almost perfect so I will just straighten the screw up so it looks nice Pretty well perfect. I will just stay straight in the screw. You guys know me, I like my screw heads nice and straight. The slotting of the screws. Oh my god, it's hurting them. Almost perfect. We need to go a little higher on it. And over the years, one will get to know which way you need to turn the screw. Um, you know, do you need to make the string uh, longer or shorter? Um, you'll get pretty good at knowing when to do what to do. Perfect. Let's play it and find and fine tune it.
and loaded and ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Natural finish. Um, natural finish. Uh, um, oh Lord, I'm getting tired. Uh, natural finish. Karina wood. It's what's called Karina. Karina, Karina. Just like the old song and the movie. Corina, Corina. 
That's what this is. Um, this guitar is $1,100 new. It is new. Somebody bought it, played it once, put it away. Um, this thing is 100% factory original, except for the new string, the high E that I just put on. Um, that it broke. <laughs> Uh, the original one shortened up for some reason. The tip broke off of it, I guess. And then I put a new one on, and then I broke it, and then I put another one on. Um, reason being, these uh, string locks can be hard to deal with. Um, but I, I, I did a pretty good job on it. Boy, the frets and the fretboard looks really good. Oh, you know what? I forgot to take an after picture. The fretboard. Oh, no. I could take an after one. It'll have the strings on it, but gosh darn it! I messed up. That's okay. It still looks good after the fact. I mean, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it's very rare that I forget to take an after picture. But it just goes to show you, I'm a little thing that's called human. I make mistakes. Aren't we all? We're all a little thing called human. We're not robots. We're not automatons. We're not cyborgs. We are human. We're human, and that's okay. But this came out pretty darn nice. I'll take pictures of it tomorrow on 4th of July. And up for sale it will go for, I think I'm going to put 800 on it. I don't want to sell it. This is one I want to keep. Uh, but. You can't keep everything in the world, so I will put a full pop retail on it. And uh, if somebody buys it, great. If they don't, that's fine too. I won't cry over it. Um, I will definitely not cry over it. <laughs> um, I didn't have to do any big repairs on. I didn't have to do any repairs on this guitar because it's new. I did take the screws out here for the uh, pickup bezel. They were ever so slightly uh, kind of dull and corroded. Just, I mean, ever so slightly. So I took those off and took them into the shop and uh, wire brushed them. I just touched them to the wire wheel um, for like literally one second. And uh, that cleaned them right up. And they look exactly like the other ones. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this is all good. She's a beaut. She's a nice piece. I'm going to close this video out at, uh, right at midnight, about 10 minutes here, because I am really tired, and tomorrow is 4th of July, got a big day. Um, hopefully I will have a lot of sales tomorrow because a lot of people have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off for the long weekend. Um, so I am preparing for a lot of sales. Um, so I think tomorrow night, um, pending how I feel and time, I will go ahead and I will do that, um, that, um, Epiphone Wildcat. Um, if not, um, I do have other guitars lined up to do. Um, I've got a J. Terser um, Mustang, uh, brand new in the box. It's still wrapped up. It's brand new in the box. Um, I, the only thing I will do is I will take it out, 
and I will wax it and I will put a setup on it and put it back in the box and that's it and it's uh, it'll be a $220 guitar not high end um, Jay Tercers are typically not high end guitars but it's brand the frig new um, still in the box still wrapped up still sealed um, so depending on how I feel and my back and all that um, and time permitting I will either do that guitar or I will do the uh, Epiphone Wildcat um, if not I have another guitar sitting here that I built and made myself from scratch from raw blocks of wood um, I told you guys about it it's that uh, flamed maple uh, body natural with flamed maple neck natural and it's not a cap or a top it is solid flamed maple neck and solid flamed maple body um, it's really heavy but it's a cool guitar um, it's a Jackson uh, when I worked at Jackson it's a Jackson custom shop um, uh, it's an NOS guitar, new, new, new old stock, and I uh, I put it together. It's got a 80s uh, Kaler tremolo on it. Um, it's got SSH pickups. Um, beautiful guitar. That one I'll get about 700, 754. Um, so it's a cool piece. I'll show it to you real quick. It's really heavy. Well, it's not really heavy. I mean, it's it's no more than a, a than a unchambered Gibson Les Paul, but it is solid flamed maple. It's not a cap or a top. It is solid flamed maple with a solid flamed maple neck. I'd say it probably weighs about nine pounds, maybe eight pounds, and it's got the 1980s Kaler uh, tremolo in it. Um, this one I built years and years and years ago. Um, I just busted it out. So I think it's time to to uh, put a set, re put a setup on it. And, and uh, I can't find the tremolo arm, so I'll have to. Uh, I have one for it, but I lost the original one to it. But I have tremolo arms for them. And, and put a tremolo arm on it and clean it up and do my thing to it and uh, yeah this thing is bad to the bone I mean this thing is bad ass it's a little bit thicker than your typical strap just a little bit thicker you can see it's pretty thick but not overly thick and it's beautiful I mean it's, it's just stunning um, that's an $800 guitar all day long. So I'll put the tremolo back on it and do my thing to it. And then I have an Alvarez um, Classic 2 sitting here. Um, it needs a pick guard and a center pickup. Um, I'll show you that real quick. Oh. So that's a project to do next. Pretty nice. Um, made in the USA, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, pretty cool piece. Um, that's one I'll probably be asking about. Um, yeah. I'll probably ask about 480 for it. It's a real nice body. Beautiful piece. Beautiful um, sunburst. So I just need to put the uh, center pickup in it and the perloid pick guard, and uh, that'll be done. And uh, yeah, so there you have it on some of my next projects to do. And I'm looking quite forward to it. I've got a lot of projects for this summer, um, clear up until. Halloween. I'm going to be phenomenally busy with guitars to do. Um, I just, yeah, it's just like a lot of projects. 
I'm starting to get a little too backed up on projects. All in all, I've probably got close to 30 project guitars. And by project, I mean guitars that need to be completed, that need to be put together. Maybe they just need a pickup, or just need a pick guard, or just need a pair of tuners, or, you know, something, something like that. Um, and then I have other guitars that the bodies need to be, I need to finish shaping the bodies and sanding them and finishing them and clear coating them. Um, of those, I've got about eight projects, um, guitars and basses. Um, I'm going to have a very busy summer, um, at least until Halloween. I'm going to be phenomenally busy, um, which is a good thing. I, I like that, you know, I don't, you know. Um, work is a good thing. <laughs> work is a good thing. Um, it's fun. I don't do this just for the money. Um, you know, I do it because it's fun too. And it's something I like and, and love, and I have an extreme passion to do. So, yeah. I'll go ahead and close this video out in a couple of minutes here. And I will have this listed on uh, Craigslist, uh, Facebook Marketplace, and my website, my personal website uh, tomorrow. Um, and you guys will be able to go to um, Classic Guitar on Facebook, and that's uh, K L A S I C space guitar. Um, not the traditional way of spelling the word classic, but K-L-A-S-I-C, guitar. And you can find that on uh, Facebook and Twitter also. And, uh, and my personal website. And yeah, this is beaut. The frets and fretboard turned out real nice. It's a shame I did break a string, but it's only a dollar, so what can you do? Um, it happens. I haven't broken a string, a brand new string that I just put on a guitar while putting it on. I haven't broken one in years. Um, but it happens. You know, it happens. And, uh, and that's okay. Just one of those things. This is a, a nice guitar. Uh, I bought this for my friend Kevin, uh, who in turn bought that person he bought it from bought it brand new and played it once um, for like less than an hour and uh, put it away. I mean, it doesn't have any strum marks on pick strum marks on it. On the pick guard, you can usually look at the pick guard and you can see a bunch of strum marks. None. I mean, no strum marks on it. Um, it just had these two ever so slightly. Um, pick up bezel screws that were ever so slightly tarnished so I pulled them out took them to the shop and um, hit them on the wire wheel um, for one second and that was it so um, yeah beautiful guitar these are about eleven hundred dollars new um, I'm gonna put eight hundred on it and if somebody gives me eight hundred dollars great if not if it doesn't sell that's fine um, this is a guitar that's not a need to sell, have to sell. Um, I'll be adding this to, to my personal collection. And uh, if somebody one day comes along and gives me $800 cash for it, um, fine. I do have another one. It's a, it's a Sunburst. Uh, it's a Sunburst one. Um, this one's a little rare, rarer um, in that it's just the, the natural finish. Uh, so, yeah. So there you have it, guys. Um, so thank you for watching another uh, classic guitar video. And hopefully tomorrow's uh, video, if I do have one, it's 4th of July. It will be the um, Epiphone Wildcat sitting here. Um, or that Jay Terser Mustang. We'll see. So thank you very much, and uh, see you next time.